So a while back, I had an idea to uh, do a square coffee table based on a cookie slab. So I was able to get my hands on this Clara Walnut cookie and cut it into four. And the goal was to fill the center with epoxy and didn't realize at the time how how much epoxy was going to go into the, the center there, but kind of spaced it out so that it looked right and that's kind of the way it ended up. Uh, about 38 by 38 inches seemed to look the best. I did my standard process for these tables, which is uh, in, in this situation here, I'm using uh, just a regular particle board with um, Tyvek tape covering the whole thing. Use melamine, still cover it with Tyvek tape just to make sure when you get those leaks, they uh, can kind of run wild on you. I haven't had any issues with any leaking, so I've been kind of lucky, but it's all about this prep work right here. I wrap those those side walls with Tyvek tape as well, and I just kind of add that piece underneath so it wraps around the bottom a little bit, like that. And um, when you're adding the silicone on top of that, you know it seems to do a pretty good job of keeping everything intact. Uh, drill out my pocket hole screws all the way across those side walls, and that gives me a pretty tight, secured bond to the uh, platform there. I'll do one on the edges too to kind of keep the, the vertical support straight. Um, squaring it up, trying to keep everything as close to square as possible. It's not really that big of a deal. Uh, I'm going to cut everything down to size after the table gets finished. Uh, I run a just a small bead of clear silicone on the inside. I run it on the outside edges, making sure to just keep all that, that uh, epoxy inside that form is the, the main goal here. Nothing too crazy, nothing too special, but it's worked every time for me so far. And then begins the fun part, which is cleaning up your live edge wood. That, uh, you know, most, most slabs and bark on sides of regular side grain doesn't seem to be too big of a deal getting the bark off, but these, uh, these kind of burled out little cookie slabs are quite a bit of work trying to get in and out of those little knots. Um, I'm sure they have a name too, but I just don't know what it is. <laughs> but I use these nylon brushes and uh, use, you know, sometimes I'll still go back and forth between wire brushes and the nylon ones. It just depends on the uh, what I'm trying to do with them. But the nylon brushes kind of keep the end a little safer, a little cleaner looking. You don't get the, the the gouge mark from the wire brushes as much so if you really have to get some some rough material off then I'll switch over to wire brushes here and there but uh, those those nylon ones are, are definitely a lifesaver you can pick those up on Amazon somewhere the main goal with this process is just to keep all the little floaters from drifting off into your epoxy especially on this one in particular I, wanted to go with like a clear frost and so any little thing that pops off of these is going to definitely be seen in there and it's kind of almost impossible to get every little speck but you know this one ended up actually turning out pretty good in the end so I, 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 did, a, I did a good job cleaning it up but anything rotten or uh, loose you know you just want to make sure everything's as, as clean as possible I mean um, that's, that's the ultimate goal. So this lab had some pretty deep crevices. I thought this little part here would look pretty neat. Showing with the clear and frosted look, it'll kind of show through and bring a little light through this this area here but there was a bunch of rot inside of it so you kind of got to get a little creative when you're getting these big crevices out you know mainly I just grab whatever's sitting around I, I got some chisels and some, some some picks some ice pick looking things and uh, some skinnier skinnier wire wheels that they're um, kind of more at a point so I can kind of dig in there and, and uh, get it out with the drill and 
and just trying to trying to get everything loosened up as, as good as possible. Um, I, you know, take a take an air compressor afterwards and just blast it out, kind of go at it again, blast it out, go at it again, just keep that process going until pretty much nothing's flaking off at that point. For the main deep pour, I end up taking just a mixed up version of the same stuff. I use that super clear deep pour epoxy every time on this stuff. It's the, still one of the only brands I've ever used out of all these years that, that doesn't yellow as much, if, if at all, not as much as any of the other brands that I've tried. I've tried every single one of them. And super clear and just never fails me. Even on this table in particular, finished product, it's it's still alive and well and uh, it's it's been been hanging in there and I don't see any signs of yellowing and it's it's true and true clear and, and with a frosted look to it and looks great so thanks super clear for that but anyway I take this clear this uh, seal coat kind of go over everything make sure if there is any little specks or pieces that are going to try to flop out in my in my deep pour try to seal everything up uh, with these cookies in particular super porous so you know I end up doing a few flood coats after the the main deep pour anyway just to kind of keep sealing in if you've played with the cookie slabs or end grain in, in particular you know that the the holes are endless so this is the just at least the beginning process to try to keep everything that is loose tight to it and trying to absorb as much as you can in there and that kind of also lets me not use clamps i've used clamps in the past and, and that seal coat i let it kind of stick down to my base and and that kind of holds them in place so you can see like i'm not worried about them floating here um, i haven't had any problems with that so that's kind of been my go-to process at this point is just do the seal coat and stick them down to the base then do the pour i'm sure that varies on sizes and, and types of wood you know but so far i haven't had any problems with that so here just just dumping in that that clear epoxy and uh popping bubbles with the torch and everything's going smooth so unfortunately for me at the time i that old table that you see me working on, it's, it's, this has been months ago prior to making this video. It's kind of been, this footage has been sitting around for a while, but I've upgraded the whole little shop area since then. But when I was doing this one, this kind of partial reason is I didn't have, I had a sled set up on my old workbench and kind of related to that. That's kind of part of it right there, but it wasn't adequate to do like a 36 or a 48 inch width kind of table so unfortunately here I had to just make a makeshift you know little router sled on the ground uh, just to get this one done which kind of prompted me to, to make a whole new workbench and all that which I have some videos coming down the road for that kind of went through the whole process and very happy with the with the new setup but uh, unfortunately on this one in particular I had to, to get on the knees and, and get it done um, I go straight if it's a if it's a rough router sled process that's kind of all I have to go to I don't really have anybody around here that I can drop my wood off at and have them do it for me so which I kind of enjoy the sledding process anyway but if it's a if it's a rough milling process I, I go straight for the Rotex and and that thing is awesome I mean I you know I, I've gotten around it before I've made plenty of tables without any of this festival stuff but I tell you it, it <laughs> It is key when you're doing this kind of work or finish work anyway. I mean, like I said, I've been a contractor for many years and I've used cheap tools and they're fine, you know, for certain processes you can get away with a lot of cheap stuff. It's really not that necessary, but I did notice a huge difference between sanders doing this kind of stuff and, you know, normal sanding and whatnot. You don't need to go go all high end for, for normal processes, but man, all the Festool sanders that I've purchased to do stuff like this, it, specifically it's helped immensely um, so this is where I end up you know those little holes in these pinholes on these uh, these end grain slabs end grain wood in general they just keep popping up so I I do a few 
uh, tabletop epoxy seal coats and uh, try to try to let it soak into as much as I can. That kind of eliminates some of the process of the CA glue, uh, which you'll see here in a second of just dabbing little holes over and over and over again. And it, it takes hours and hours and hours to try to get a super clean look. Because when you're looking straight at it, especially in the sun, you will see all these little pits. So it's basically this process back and forth of just CA glue and activator over and over and over again, sand it down, start over again, you know, get some good light. Lighting's the, the, the key process here. I, I don't need any overhead lights. I, I kind of working in the garage here, so I have the garage door open and from that certain angle, I got awesome lighting coming through that shows me everything I need to see and, uh, and it works well, but once that's done, then I can uh, square everything up. This is what I'm doing here. Track saw, once again, awesome, awesome for this process. Uh, I don't have any larger tools that can, you know, do large scales tables and get everything square as good as this little track saw setup does. Um, I, I did want to do a chamfer on this one, so I went in with, uh, you know, it's basically just as far as the track saw would go. After that, I take this 120 grit just sand block and just kind of knock down any little burrs on the edges, just kind of get it ready. Uh, plenty more sanding to go, but this kind of helps just making sure there's no little grabbers on there. Uh, fortunately, after doing the chamfered edges and squaring everything up, you open up a bunch of other cracks and crevices and, and begin the the whole CA glue and activator and more sanding over and over again. And I like to end up doing most of this process kind of early morning is when my uh, my good sunlight comes shining through like that. And, it really does help with seeing all the little divots that are popping up as I'm kind of trying to get everything to a, a perfect point to finish. So this helps. And after that, I end up just blowing off as the bottom. Um, finally finished with that, end up just wiping it down and using this kind of Amazon purchased aftermarket mineral spirits to get it kind of cleaned up so I can get focused on the top here. And uh, once again, more CA glue and, and activator and <laughs> back to sanding. And there's plenty more hours of sanding that I'm sparing you from, but you get the point. And after all that madness, I finally get to uh, jump on the Rubio Monaco, my favorite part. That's the pure clear version. They have uh, other different types of tinted stains and finished coats but uh, this being a clear frosted epoxy table I kind of wanted to stick with that clear still I never really looked into if that would cause any yellowing but I haven't seemed to have any issues with that uh, since the table had been built uh, I got that cheap orbital polisher and I, I did find uh, five inch um, scotch bright pads on Amazon that were perfect instead of cutting my own strips off the uh, the rectangle blocks uh, seem to save a little time and, and uh, if you store them correctly you can actually kind of reuse them if you're doing a few tables in a row. And then I moved on to the base build and I ended up using uh, these little gussets and tabs trying to get these ready to, to weld them into the, um, the corner. I ended up, I wanted to do kind of a four a four leg system that took up a lot of the space but still let some of the light kind of come through the base in since it was the clear frosted in the center I wanted that kind of light to shine through and go up through so it wouldn't be such a such a dark top but um, ended up using 11 gauge steel from IMS uh, industrial metal supply and had um, some local sheet metal guys do my 90 degree radius bends for me I don't have anything 
capable of getting that done. I think it was 24 inch by 12 inch pieces that I ended up just kind of bending in half. Um, added two tabs on the on the corners there to to get my my ends, and then the goal with the gussets was kind of keep everything square and and also add that that third hole for a little extra support and, and one more lag in there. Uh, I took all four of the legs and put them together. I wanted to get as close as I could. I knew there'd probably be some fine tuning in the end of the, that when I finally attached them, but wanted to just kind of square, square them up together, kind of get them uniform. Then I sanded them down, gave them a little acetone bath and sent them off to be powder coated, going with a satin black finish. And they ended up turning out great. And here I got them back. Uh, they, they're not as dirty as they look. They're just not wiped down really well yet. But just trying to get them in place, seeing where I liked them. I kind of wanted them close to the edge. I thought that looked the best. Trying to get everything lined up so I can mark the holes out and begin drilling for these inserts. I uh, did a little pilot drill on some of these just to make sure I was where I wanted them to be before I did the actual depth drill there. Uh, just a little blue tape on there for my depth gauge and it worked out fine. Um, I ended up putting these inserts in. This time around I was using CA glue. I, I haven't had any personal problems with any of that. Um, they seem to hold up just fine. I actually, this was just a temporary fit here. I just had some oversized washers that were sitting around. Figured I'd use them just to see and make sure everything lines up. And just a little added feature that I like to add on some of my woodworking projects. Just a little personal logo brand on the bottom. And uh, just lets everybody know that you're the one that did it, right? That's about it for this one. I'm overall very happy with the way this one turned out. And the table itself was more just a kind of a sample project I've been wanting to do for some time. Just finally got around to getting it done. Uh, it's actually currently down in Costa Mesa, California. I have a little gallery space down there. So if you're ever in the area and want to come by and check things out, go ahead and there's a link in the bio to the website. You can schedule an appointment. And I'd be Happy to walk you through the place. Plenty of artwork and uh, random things that I end up creating end up down there before they find themselves their final home to go to. So that's about it. All right, well, thanks for hanging in there to the end. And got plenty more of these if they're interesting to you at all. <laughs> There's plenty more videos to come. All right, thank you.